we can see a little bit theory with respect to C programming, right? And um, I have executed one single program that is hello hello um, hello world ki jaise aapka first program humne for execute kiya tha, right? And yesterday I have explained how you create a file within the VS Code. Today also I will explain how how can we create a file within VS Code. How can we execute the program? Let us go to VS Code first. Those who are for the first are coming for the first time, when you have installed VS Code on your desktop on your machine, you have a VS Code as a shortcut icon. So you can double click on that and just open the VS Code. So I request everyone you can go along with me and just open VS Code. Today I will show you the complete steps again so that if someone missed in the last lecture, they, they this is a revision for them. Um, those who were yesterday, those who were available yesterday, it's a revision. Tomorrow onwards, I will not show you how to create a file in VS Code. Okay. Today we are in day two. So I have created a day two folder. Yesterday uh, you have created OM5 folder. Inside OM5, you have created day zero one. Today I have created day zero two. I request everyone please create day zero two folder somewhere in your on your machine. Maybe C drive, D drive, E drive, F drive, wherever you want to create. Just create day zero two. All right. If you are done with creating a folder, then go to File, Open Folder, and click on Day Two, Select Folder. So this will open Day Two as your current workspace, right? So this is the area where I'm going to work for this day, right? Now, when we when we talk about opening a folder or you can say a workspace in that case uh, this is like i am going to work under day two and that is what is today's task so this is called as a workspace for today right i'll close this welcome screen when you see this day two this is called as explorer window on in this explorer window on the left hand side you have day zero two which shows that you are under this directory, right? Now, when you are working under this directory, in that case, there is which is there is an icon which is called as new file. There is an icon which is called as new folder. There is an icon which is called as refresh. And there is, this is collapse, means it will go back, right? Um, so when I'm saying I want to create a file, I want to write a program, I want to develop my program, in that case, First of all, when you want to develop a program, I need something called as editor and that editor is your VS Code editor, right? And how I create a file? First of all, you create a new file. When you create a file, make sure you not you you should give your file name in a proper manner for example i am giving day two underscore one dot c which stands for or which normally convention that i will be going to follow is today it's our day two and i'm writing underscore one that means it is my first program so, uh, day two first program dot c is the extension that i'm giving to this program now when i'm giving dot c that means my compiler will come to know that this is a program which will be written in the c programming language so i'll press enter as soon as i press enter you will receive some editing area here i will write the program and yesterday i have explained that there is something called as some header file inclusion area and here I will include stdio.h, let us say stdlib.h.
initially we will add only two header files as and when time comes if required we will add few more header files these are the header files which is also called as file inclusion area and this is used for using when i'm going to use some predefined functionality now when i'm saying i want to write a program and in that case there is something called as entry point function so main is called as entry point function from this your program is going to execute and yesterday we have written something called as hello program right and i had return a return zero make sure yesterday i have given you explanation about right now i am using only one type of main that means only one prototype or the uh, you can say this is called as main function declaration many yaha pe main function aise likha hai as and when time comes we will use or we will declare main function in different way also and that is called as different flavors of main that we have in c programming language so for time being you can consider that every main whenever i am writing a main inside the program this is called as entry point function right now it is having a print if statement it will try to print the hello for me and there is return zero right this is basically a program which is hello program or first basic c program right now when i'm talking about terminal terminal mein you go to new terminal this is where i have first written a program so this is my editing area editing area means i am trying to edit my program over here in this area and i want to see the output to see the output i will try to execute through the terminal i go to this terminal and i say open terminal here when i am writing g c c and my program name is day2_1.c when we write gcc it is like i am giving one command to compile the c program which program i want to compile i want to compile day2_1.c file and whenever i try to compile my source code this is also called as a source code or a program source code means the code which is written by the user in C, in any programming language so if i am writing gcc day2_1.c that means i am giving instruction to the compiler that i need to compile this program what my program will do in the compilation phase my compiler will try to convert this particular program into machine understandable language right as soon as i press enter if there are no errors into this program there is something called as a.exe file is generated now how this a.exe file is generated what are the intermediate steps within the compilation process that i'm going to explain but how to till this point it is, this will show me how to compile the program how to execute i'll write dot slash a dot exe it is printing me hello okay i'll not include slash n for time being i'll just execute it again slash n i have not yet in, um, introduced you let us just wait for that so it is displaying me hello right this hello will basically print the whatever number of characters or what whatever number of uh, you can say characters i have written within this printf those are printed on your output screen this output screen is called as terminal sometimes you call it as a command prompt 
also and sometimes you can call it as a console also so all these are the same terminologies that are used now in case of this printf is one function and since i am giving or i am using this function i know that whenever i will use this printf function the data will be printed on my output screen have i defined this functionality no i am just using this printf function when i'm just using this printf function in that case i have its own definition defined inside this predefined header files called as stdio.h and when we talk about standard header file that means standard input output dot h header file this is basically already available inside your bin folder means when you have installed gcc from that you will understand that they, these are the predefined library functions that i am using right till this point we, i have explained in the last lecture let me see few queries are there <coughs> why we use slash n that's the reason i have just removed it slash n is for new line but i have not introduced introduced slash n right now so just wait for for one more lecture i will come to that point okay right so you can execute dot slash a dot exe and so this is how this it, uh, it is giving me the output now first of all let me uh, ask you one question and you can post it into the chat box whenever you are working on any application just listen to the question whenever i am installing any application you can take any application you can take your in your phone if you are installing let us say chrome if you are installing let us say facebook if you are installing whatsapp if you are installing some uh, any any file if you are installing then how many number of executable files are there for one single application i hope you have understood the question the question is when you install any software or any application how many executable files are there normally someone is saying n number of files someone is saying one someone is saying don't know good right the answer is there is only one executable file for one application now let us consider the scenario or let me first go to the slide and show you this process so yesterday i have just introduced what do you mean by compilation it's the application program which converts high level programming language code into low level programming language so c source code is converted into low level programming language code so gcc is your gnu's compiler collection that we are we are using we you have already you must have used something or heard about something called as turbo c that is turbo compiler that was given by borland so these are the different there can be different compilers <coughs> available for converting your high level language into your low level language right now when i'm talking about compiler any programming language if i'm writing any program in any programming language in that case i need a compiler to convert that code right and this is why we have installed gcc because gcc is the compiler which will convert my c program into low level language my c++ program into low level language when you go for let us say java then in that case you require a jdk compiler that is java development kit when you go for python you require a different compiler so every language needs a compiler such that your machine can understand that code and that is what is the difference you can um, yesterday few students were asking what is the difference between editor and the compiler editor is basically you can say vs code is your editor where you can edit your program you can write your program but compiler will actually convert your program but now the question is how your compiler converts your program so when i say my program is getting converted in that case it goes through program execution 
phases right now first of all when i say program execution phases right low level means you can consider binary or any executable file any any file which your machine can understand that is low level program low level language okay now let us say i'm sharing whiteboard and i'm explaining to you the compilation process right first of all just a second <coughs> i'll share this i'll share a whiteboard now to explain you the compilation process right now let us assume i have <coughs> let us assume i have one project right i am working on single project right and let us say this project is having three files three source files let us say file 1.c second file name is file 2.c and third is basically let us say file 3.c so i am working on one single project and it is always possible that whenever we are working on large projects there may be n number of files which are available within that project so i will say this is nothing but my source code files which are having the extension dot c files right now jaise hi i give the compilation process in that case first step is basically your pre processing step now what i mean by pre processing so there are different phases let me just go over here first phase is your pre processing phase so in this case what actually happens is basically jo bhi mera hash include statement hai for example there is hash include whenever we will do something called as macro topic that that macro expansion whenever we will, we will see some pre processor directives all these things we will see in detail but for time being you just remember you just understand hash include is one type of pre processing so when i'm talking about pre processing in that case first of all whenever i have included this hash include the step, next step is your program will try to perform pre processing task what is pre processing it will try to bring your link files into your program maine likha hai hash include stdr.h yes hash include stdlib.h yes so it will try to bring your header files from the standard memory location to your program so this is called as the second step which is called as pre processing step so this is pre processing once this pre processing is done after that it is generating something called as expanded code so i am saying mere program mein hash include stdio.h aa gaya hash include stdlib.h aa gaya means my code has been expanded now expanded means its size gets increased because i have brought the header files in my program so once i will receive expanded code then that expanded code is given to compiler and that is your gcc compiler because when i say i have written a source code first of all is pre processing because when your compiler will try to see the code from line 1 to line last line in that case it will check is there any predefined function used is there any header file which is included if yes then it will bring from that now first of all when i have initially that is a source code c code dot c file once i generate expanded code who generates it your system generates it you are not aware about all the internals of all this how your system is doing it is this is what is the process that i am explaining now 
एक्सपांडेड कोड इज बेसिकली योर डॉट आई फाइव सो पहले मेरा डॉट सी फाइल रहता है एंड इमीडिएटली वंस द कोड गेट्स एक्सपांडेड आई विल रिसीव डॉट आई फाइव how how do i see a dot uh, how do i um, know that this is the dot i file it is not visible you can just see directly exe file so aapko sirf dot c se dot exe file dikhti hai aapko intermediate files nahi dikhti hai the reason is if i am having dot c file expanded code is get generated it is having or it is having the extension called as dot i file so after pre processing which file gets generated dot i file is generated once this dot i file is generated that is used by my compiler now the compiler will come to know that this is my dot i file so here i will have a dot i file on which your compiler is going to work once this dot i file is generated compiler will convert your program into assembly code now why it converts into assembly code because your cpu understand only instructions that means if you have if you must have word that cpu is having let us say first fetch cycle then decode cycle then execute cycle that means everything is converted into the form of instruction because cpu executes your pro programs in the form of instructions only so i need to convert that particular dot i file contents into some instruction and that instructions is known as assembly code now how whenever i receive a dot i file compiler will first generate dot asm file so after this process dot i file ke baad i will receive one more internal file which is called as dot asm you can call it as dot asm in case of windows or in case of ubuntu you may receive dot s file now what happens once this file is generated once this file is generated the previous file gets destroyed automatically now my compiler will work on dot s file now what is this in what what is available inside this dot s file dot s file is called as assembly code file which will be given to assembler so assembler is one more language converter that is used when we are executing the programs assembler will try to give your give the instructions in the form of assembly language and this instructions will be given to the cpu for execution of the project but before the assembler works on this asm file immediately after that there is one obj file is generated what is obj file it is called as object file right now when i create this obj file that means for this particular assembler after that obj file is called or obj file is created so let us assume in our code we were having three files file 1.c फाइल टू डॉट सी फाइल थ्री डॉट सी जैसे ही मेरे ये सारे असेंबली कोड बन जाएंगे इमीडिएटली इसके बाद माई कंपाइलर विल जनरेट ऑब्जेक्ट फाइल फॉर ईच फाइल सो लेट एस से फाइल वन डॉट आई फाइल वन डॉट एस फाइल टू डॉट आई फाइल टू डॉट एस फाइल थ्री डॉट आई फाइल थ्री डॉट एस वंस दिस files are generated then it will generate let us say file 1. obj file 2. obj and let us say <coughs> let me just write first file 1. obj will get generated after that let us say file 2. obj that is object file gets generated and third file 3. obj will get generated now जैसे ही मेरा फाइल ओबीजे बन बन गया आफ्टर दैट देर इज वन ईएक्सी फाइल जनरेटेड बट बिफोर वर्किंग ऑन दिस ईएक्सी फाइल देर कम्स अ लिंकर 
So what actually happens is initially I have a source code that code is expanded. So I will get it as expanded code. That code is given to the compiler. It will convert into assembly code. That code is convert to given uh, to the assembler and then it converts into object code. And this object code is converted again into executable code. Now, logically, if I speak, अगर file one, file two, file three है, तो हर time यहाँ पे मेरे तीन, यहाँ पे file one dot i बनती रहेगी, यहाँ पे file two dot i and file three dot i. Here also file one dot s, file two dot s, file three dot s, file one dot obj, file two dot obj and file three dot obj. But immediately after this, immediately after this if I say, if I generate, let us say, next three files. Assume if you generate three exe files, you, it is not possible at all. I'm just explaining you why, what is, what do you mean by exe file and why there is only one. If I'm saying file one dot exe ek bana, assume. If I'm saying file two dot exe bana, assume and if i'm saying i have got let us say file 3 dot right and let us assume now i am selling this particular project to some customer right so my project is sold to some other customer that customer will not be able to see all these intermediate steps how I can give this project to that customer? I will give, let us say, exe files only. Correct? Now, if I am giving only exe files, that is executable files, that person will not come to know what intermediate steps I have done. You have installed n number of applications. 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 Normally, there is an exe file. Hai. अगर मैं आपको यहाँ पे बोलूँगी, please at file one dot exe है, file two dot exe है, file three dot exe है. This is when, let us say ऐसे करके I have three files. And now I am telling to the end user, first you follow the sequence, execute this exe, then execute this exe, and then you execute this exe. मैं ऐसा sequence बोल रही हूँ, right? Now how many times I can give instruction to the user? I cannot give instructions to the user that these are the three files. You have to follow the sequence. If you do not follow, your project will not work. This is only three files. Assume, mere paas ek aur project hai, project 2. And in this project, I have 1.exe, ek file hai, 2.exe, ek file hai, 3.exe. Aise karke mere paas, let us say, 50.exe files hai, right? अगर मेरे पास एक सिंगल प्रोजेक्ट की 50 exe फाइल्स है, उसमें से I am telling to the customer और I am telling to the end user, you have to follow the sequence. क्या सीक्वेंस फॉलो करना है? पहले जो थर्ड फाइल है, you please execute that, right? Then जो सेकंड फर्स्ट फाइल है, you please execute that. Then जो फिफ्टीएथ वाली फाइल है, please execute that, right? So this is the sequence that you have to follow. Will anyone will remember this? Of course, no one will buy my project. No one will see into this project because this is very difficult for remembering the sequence and following the sequence, right? So what actually happens whenever any object file is generated, then there comes a linker in between. What is the job of linker? Linker performs normally few tasks. Right, I'll mention the tasks for linker. First, most important task combining all dot obj files into one single dot obj. That is the first most important task. And second, linking of three libraries. Right now, what do you mean by all this? When I'm talking about linker, the linker will perform, combine all dot obj files into one single obj. Abhi tak humne jo VS code likha, usme ek hi file thi, to uska ek hi dot obj bana, uska ek hi exe bana. Yahan tak mere paas koi bhi problem nahi hai. But if I have a project 
which will have multiple OBJ files, linker will combine all these OBJ files all together. That means these, this object file is given to linker, this object file is given to linker, this object file is given to the linker. Linker, it's the job of linker to link these object files and generate only one single OBJ file. And once my agar mere paas ek hi single obj file ban jati hai to obviously from that i can easily generate one exe so yahan pe iske baad meri single dot exe file banti hai so that is the first class of linker combining all dot obj files into single obj so how it performs it is a job of linker linker will combine multiple obj files perform some linking operation between them and generate one single obj agar ek single obj ban, ban jati hai then it generates one single exe file and that is the reason we have always for one single application there is only one exe file because whenever we convert our project in which is having multiple number of files they may generate multiple number of obj files and those obj files must be linked together because i cannot tell anyone ki please execute 50th file please execute 25th file please execute 100th file please please execute first file you have to follow the sequence this i cannot do and that's the reason the linker will do the job for me this will try to link and generate one single object and jaise hi meri single object file ban gayi iske baad one single dot exe file is generated isliye jab mera project banta hai to mere ab if my project name was let us see i am giving one project project name as project then yahan pe mere project ki project dot exe file banegi ek hi file exe file banegi understood now this exe is given to your processor for the execution so after linker there comes a loader loader will load your project or program inside main memory for execution this is the job of loader so this is what is called as complete compilation process i have explained the first job of linker which will combine all obj files into one single obj file and other task of linker is linking of libraries now in my program i have used printf function right where is my printf function defined it is defined inside stdio.h who is going to link that my linker is going to do this linker will try to link your functions which you have used in your program linking to your standard libraries so that is the second job you can con find karega ki printf function stdio mein hai ki nahi hai so there must be someone who can perform this task and that is nothing but linker job so if you see this diagram then if i have only one single file then the job of linker is to only link with the library files and generate exe code but if i have multiple number of object files then all the libraries and other object files are linked together to generate one exe for one single project okay so that is the reason jab maine mera vs code mein program execute kiya i was having one single file but uska ek hi exe bana so this is called as complete compilation phase i am unable to see any obj file any i file on any uh, internal files because it gives me direct exe so can you imagine ki jab gcc compiler the one who have designed this gcc compilation process that a person 
have or that developer has gone through all these phases by generating these many number of intermediate files all right so this is called as program execution phase for any program understood <coughs> executable file means exe file via which you you can execute the program side आपको कोई भी प्रोजेक्ट एग्जीक्यूट करने के लिए आप फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई एम डेवलपिंग अ प्रोजेक्ट आई एम टेकिंग अप सम क्वेरी साहिल आवाज व्हाट इज एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल सो इफ इफ यू आर सेइंग आई हैव डेवलप्ड अ प्रोजेक्ट एंड आई कैन नॉट गिव सोर्स कोड टू समवन राइट यू नॉर्म अब अगर आप कोई भी एप्लीकेशन इंस्टॉल करते हो तो आपको उस एप्लीकेशन का सोर्स कोड कोड कोडिंग कैसे किया हुआ है आपको वो सब कुछ नहीं आता है आपको सिर्फ एक एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल मिलती है जो आप इंस्टॉल करते हो और वो आप यूज करते हो एंड एवरी एप्लीकेशन इज हैविंग वन एग्जीक्यूटेबल फाइल लिंकर इज हैविंग टू टास्क वन इज कंबाइनिंग ऑल ओबीजी फाइल्स इनटू वन एंड सेकंड इज लिंकिंग ऑफ लाइब्रेरीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई हैव ओबीजी फाइल्स मल्टीपल नंबर ऑफ ओबीजे फाइल्स आर देयर and those all are linked together in one single file and that is called as that is called the job of linker right assembler is basically basically when you try to give in, give your program to the cpu it is basically given in the form of instruction set so instructions are written in assembly language that is why it needs to be converted into assemblers even if just one 50 object files are arranged serially for you as a program if they are arranged serially but how you are how you are going to give the instruction to every person that you have to execute 50 exe files this is not at all feasible for you agar aapko ek single app install karne ke liye kaha aur ek app app install karne ke baad maine usko aapko kaha ki you please execute this app but back end mein you have to execute 50 other files also will you ever touch that app on this you know so that is what is the job of linker right no it is see this is this is already you do not need to install a linker because when you in, when you install compiler that means the compile these all are the compilation processes or compilation internal steps right and you do not have to install linker separately that is a part of compilation process and that is what i have shown that is internal execution of your program every job is done by your compiler who creates dot obj converts into your compiler converts it and that's the reason if you observe the heading of this program it says program execution phases Yes, Prana. Compiler converts dot obs dot obj and so on. How obj file is created? That is basically job done by compiler. Linker generates dot exe file. This is not com. This is currently we are doing till compilation process means what? जब आप प्रोग्राम में जीसीसी प्रोग्राम नेम डॉट सी लिखते हो तो इंटरनली आपकी ए डॉट ई एक्स फाइल कैसे जनरेट होती है राइट right? कैसे जनरेट होती है वो प्रोसेस है आर यू गेटिंग सुयश वैष्णवी सिंह मैम लिंकिंग लाइब्रेरी मीन्स लिंकिंग लाइब्रेरी मीन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वैष्णवी वी हैव यूज हियर प्रिंट एफ स्टेटमेंट आई स्टॉप दिस वाइट बोर्ड शेयर एंड आई गो बैक टू मेन main screen i may use whiteboard n number of times while explaining the code vaishnavi is asking ma'am linking library means now for example you are writing printf now where your printf is written printf is written inside your stdio.h so who will go to stdio.h and get the functionality <coughs> of this printf statement that is nothing but your compile that is nothing but your linker so that this is the job of linker because it is linking your this function calling to this okay shivam that's what i have explained right now janvi is saying linking only search from which library function no it takes out the functionality it checks the function declaration function x 
you will understand how the basically linking takes place when we will see user defined functions dot i file ko kaun banata hai aapka compiler if there is only one file then there is any need of linker sampada link in that case your linker will just link your header file uh, library functions with your header files that's it but if i have multiple files then it will generate multi, um, single obj by combining why the name of exe file is always a.exe it is compiler generated kisi kisi ko aapko day2_1.exe bhi generate hota hoga agar aap terminal ke through program execute kar rahe ho to hamesha aapki a.exe file banegi ujwal if you are on windows platform then this .exe.a.exe which i am showing you on the screen is correct yes all the files are deleted just one dot i dot s all the files are deleted intermediate files are deleted because dot ex a a dot exe file is generated at the end see puna is saying uh, if we install any application in mobile that time we do not install any compiler so how the process takes place see this is the process which is done at the compilation phase development phase hone ke baad aapka compilation phase aata hai jahan pe aapko exe file banta hai so it is not always necessary ki aapka jo code hai wo c mein likha ho are you getting c ka program aapko execute karna hai to aapko compiler lagega normal exe files ko execute karne ke liye not necessary you need always a compiler right okay okay ujwal uh, is your dot backslash is used are you getting the output okay then it may re, uh, differ in some of the compilers yes pranav is saying uh, dot s dot i aaya fir dot s aaya to dot i file delete ho jati hai yes pranav See, Janvi, this how your compiler comes to know that file is from X Y Z library. जैसे ही मैं printf function for example लिखा है, तो मेरा compiler खुद से ही मेरा that that's the job of linker. That's what I'm explaining. Linker will try to search whether printf is available in stdr.h, whether it is available in stdlib.h, and so on. Accordingly, it will proceed ahead. Okay. Yes, this is what is your job of linker only. So it will search automatically. Linking उसी को करना है ना? So who will link all your library functions? Yeah. yeah.